there, traders. Welcome back to your daily E-mini futures trading recap, where we identify levels of support and resistance in the SPY and use them throughout the open session to trade the E-mini futures. I'm Sam. Today is Monday, October 7, 2024. It's about 7.43 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market video. Check out the description below this video to learn more about the mission of this channel and the background of this trading strategy. Jumping right into the levels for today, notice that currently in the pre-market session, price has been pushed down a little. This is one of the possibilities that we discussed in Friday's video, that while most things look bullish at face value, the SPY is still in this position where it's kind of on edge. In the pre-market, they have already reacted off the overhead resistance we talked about earlier and pulled back. And now they're back at the 570.20 area, which was important last week. I believe it's still a place the bulls want to stay above to remain bullish. There are some zones on the board today. Those are the dashed lines. Under normal market conditions, price could react anywhere from within these areas. There are no news items or data releases of significance that I see scheduled to be released today. Later in the week, though, there will be some numbers coming out that may affect the market. For now, I just think the bulls want to keep price elevated, but the overhead resistance starting at around 573.60 and higher may be a challenge for them to get through. No guarantees of what will happen today, and small base hits of four or so ES points may be the easiest and safest thing to try for. That's probably what I'll do today if I have time to get any trades in. I know it will be a busy day at the office today, though. We'll see what happens. Come back to this chart after the closing bell to talk about what happened and analyze any trades taken as a result of these levels. Catch you on the other side. Now that the market has closed, what can we say about the levels that we identified this morning? It was another good day. Two official trades in the E-mini futures as price in the SPY came into two of our zones. Pretty obvious to see what areas the market thought was important, at least the SPY. If you were trading these levels according to the rules, what would you have done today? I'm not going to add the usual five cent buffer because it's just not something I do with zones. Price did not hit any of the standalone levels, but they hit these zones and I consider a zone like one big level. Price got down to the top part of this zone early on. It was about five minutes before 10 a.m. here, but that's no big deal. It's not a near miss. If it's within 10 cents, it is. Uh, this area is supposed to be pretty good support, so it was tradable if they got down there later in the day. They did. It was around uh, 12, 11 or so, 11 minutes after 12. And as designed, they got right in the middle of the zone and bounced away. So treating this like a process where you'd plan to buy at each extreme of the zone, especially essentially two levels, then you would have bought an E-mini contract or two or three or whatever you can afford when the spiders hit 570.42. That long position would have been your first base hit of the day, four points minimum, four ES points. And notice they got within 10 cents here of the lower part of this zone, 574. So that is a near miss. Uh, in my book, trading the bottom part of this zone should be off the table for any future trades. You can see that when they did come back down into it later, uh, it would have just barely given you a base hit. I looked at this. I, I didn't trade it uh, because... This is my reason I didn't want to take it later because of the near miss. But the high here, 570.47, should have been at least four points in the E-minis. But it's just harder to trade in that way. So that's why it's a rule. When they got down to the next zone, starting at 567.72, that would have been your second trade. They did come down and pull away. I kind of thought maybe I was having second thoughts about this. The low of this was 567.87, so not quite a near miss. But the way they pulled away from this, I thought, well, is it going to be a mistake to go in here and get into a long position toward the end of the day? But it's not violating any rules. So if you bought down here at 567.72 and again at 567.14, your average entry point would have been in the middle. And holding on for the next base hit was fairly straightforward. Took a few minutes. But there was a good safety net underneath here starting around 566 and lower. So what you'd have at this point is three base hits of four points each, assuming you traded the same number of E-mini contracts each time the SPY hit the levels of the two zones on the board from this morning, while also realizing that this near miss here, the lower part of this zone was off the table. That's the safe approach, and that's why it's a rule of mine. My trades were almost exactly as what I just explained about what you would do at each of these zones if you were following the rules. Mine were just different because I didn't settle for just four ES points. I got a little more 
So I scaled in for each trade for a total of two contracts. So I'm long two. First profit was booked. I think it was right before 12, 17 or so a.m. And that should happen. I could just let this play. It sped up enough. And that's the first base hit, six points. I'll scrub ahead to the next trade where they got down to the other zone. Once again, I did not mess with this area again. I consider it completely done, including the lower level. So all this back and forth did not matter to me. They dropped pretty hard down into the next zone. And once again, I put some limit orders on the chart. And I just pulled five points. It takes a little bit longer because they got below. And you'll see a red line here. That's my fumble threshold. Uh, in the E-mini chart, that's the line in the sand where I'm looking for things to happen under that level to know that the trade is wrong and I need to institute plan B. But obviously that was not the case today. Plus, I felt good about the safety nets under this area that I mentioned earlier. So I'll move this ahead a little bit and show you. They finally came up and I pulled my five points and there we go. Two, or really three trades. That's how I'm coding this in the log for the playing by the rules. And what you just saw for me was essentially two trades as I scaled in each time. Does the daily chart tell us anything at this point? Well, when we look at the hourly chart uh, in a second, it should be clear why they fell down today a little bit. We've been saying that it was a good possibility since last week, the fact that they could fall. We even nailed down the area where that could happen. They actually weren't strong enough to get to the real overhead resistance before pulling back today. So uh, does that mean anything? They closed the day above support. This is a 20 period moving average. So you know, the close respectable. They're still this kind of in this range here. They're above all the moving averages. This chart is still bullish, but we can't discount what things look like on smaller time frames. As you zoom in closer, you'll start to see how price is getting below some important moving averages on these shorter time frames. It's a four hour chart, three hour chart, two hour, and a one hour chart or a 60 minute. So you notice they're getting below some important moving averages. So say they keep pushing price down, at least in the short term. Back on this daily chart, is there any obvious place where they might be headed, at least before they're likely to hit support? Well, they need to get below all these lows here there will probably be some defense played there by the bulls. And a little farther down, they're now at this kind of breakout area from the last week of August. And then there's a gap down here, the close of this day, uh, September 18th, that has not been filled. So let's put a line at the close of that. I think I saw something on the hourly chart, 561.40, that's the close of that day. Let's go back to the hourly chart yeah, I thought I saw something else in the neighborhood. This 200 period moving average is right above this gap on the daily chart. So that's a good line in the sand that the bulls would need to defend if price falls. What about a rally up higher? It's the same story as last week. They would need to fight through all this area before they could try for another rally. So that's the way I see it. You know, they came up short today, fell away, but this is not going to lose too much importance unless they keep hitting this. But if they get back up there again, then they've got, they're going to meet some resistance. So there's the way I see it, they're in the middle of a lot of stuff. Of course, we'll have more precise levels each morning for intraday scalp trades in the E-minis. It's just always good to know where you're at in the big picture. Over on the log, the first one playing by the rules, we talked about the three base hits. If you're trading each level individually and you can look at the number of contracts you're able to trade and what you could have expected with your 12 ES points. And mine were two trades essentially the same thing. So scaled in with two contracts each time, but it was $1,100 if you were keeping track of those trades. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's trading recap. Hope you found it helpful. If you were among those on my list who had the levels from this morning, I hope you made some money. It was not too hard. If you trusted them, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. I appreciate the support. And before the opening bell tomorrow, we'll have new levels. Do this all over again. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.